welcome to Leap Into Your Story podcast, where you discover your inner story, break down the process, and meet others who've done it so you can leap into your own story. We interview amazing guests who provide powerful insights that inspire you to get your story told. Be sure to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com, and while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. Now sit back, get ready to take some notes, and let's get started. This episode of Leap Into Your Story podcast is brought to you by Leap Into Your Story course. Visit leapintoyourstory.com where you have a guide to get your story told. I'm Victoria Anderson, and welcome to the Leap Into Your Story podcast, where you discover your inner story, work through the process, and meet others who've done it. We interview amazing guests who provide powerful insights that will inspire you to leap into your own story. So be sure to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com, and while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. In this episode, we are going to learn about Stop Making It So Hard. My guest today is Steve Fell. He is known as the Biz Coach. He holds an MBA, is a certified business coach, author of six books, and sought after professional speaker and award winning business management executive whose consulting helped several Fortune 500 companies achieve process improvement, and long-term success. So, Steve, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Now, before we dive into our questions and discussions, tell us a little bit about your story, your journey, and and how did this, uh, how did you get started doing what you do? Well, it's kind of funny because I was working, I got brought onto a company and they were brand new. And I said, well, why do you bring it? They're trying to steal me from another company. They're like, listen, you're going to be our fifth employee. Here's our goal for the company. I'm like, I'm in. So the the division I was in, they had quite a few divisions. They they really wanted to focus on it to make money fast. So another person and I, we took over the division and created all the processes, procedures and everything else. And I really enjoyed it. Plus, growing their business, that seg- or that division. And that one thing leads to another, and it was actually in the music industry. So I was traveling around musical acts, handling all their merchandise. And then I started doing efficiency, process improvement, logistics, saving money all everywhere, but we're getting more efficient. We're selling more merchandise and more products. Next thing you know, the venues that we were at started noticing what I was doing and going, hey, we need help too. So I said, okay, great. So I ended up doing a double job, coaching and consulting before I had to do my job for this company. And then when I got tired of traveling the world, I know it sounds horrible. I got tired of traveling the world because I was doing it for pretty much 10 straight years. You don't really stop. I said, enough's enough. And I started my first company. And I didn't know where to start. So I actually had to seek out some help. Where do I even start? And my first company was writing business and marketing plans for tech companies. And I am not a techie. So it it started growing from there. And since that time, I've owned and operated seven businesses and ran three others. It's been quite a journey, but all my passion has always gone back to small business owners and entrepreneurs. That's where my passion lies. Not the big corporations. I know people who take care of that, the C-suite people. I want the owner operator because I know what they're going through. Wow. Yes. And that's, and usually it's difficult for them to reach out because they wear so many hats and, you know, they, they are the CEO and the facilities manager and HR and their customer service rep and operations. Yes. They're wearing all those hats and, um, but that's good because um, I think corporations have enough resources. Usually small businesses struggle with that. Right. Um, Plus, in corporations, say the CEO is hired for this many things. Yes. Whereas a, a small business owner, they think that's what they're, but it's just nonstop of all the things they have to take care of. And they only know what they know. 
And that's why the failure rate of small business owners have held consistent since 1932. And it's sad. And I'm like, one of my passions is let's turn that around and start seeing a bigger success rate, not a bigger failure rate. Right, right. That's, that's awesome. Um, I'm glad that you're a great resource for them and you help them success because we need more small business success. They are the fabric of the economy. And I mean, not only that, but they make it interesting. I mean, without small business, I mean, who wants to go to same old, same old and small business offer that unique variety um, for and the niche catering too. Yeah. I mean, 96% of all businesses are small business. Yes. That, that means 4% are massive corporations. And we think of the corporate names, we, all, we can name them off all day. But how many times have you gone just driving around your local neighborhood, small business, small business, small business, they're packed everywhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I support mine. <laughs> yes. So always support your small business owners in your community. Because you know what? They're supporting the community. That's right. I, I couldn't agree with you more. So let's talk about, you've turned your passion into quite a few books. I should say passion and expertise. Six books. Six. The (laughs) seventh one is done. Oh, and the seventh (laughs) one is in the works. Awesome. It's in my editor's hands to Nice. Nice. Yes, the world needs more books, like small businesses. (laughs) So can you share what inspired you to write them and tell us about you know, some, maybe some of your case studies that are unique that made in your, and who are your audiences for them? Who's, who, are they all going into small business or who, who's reading your books too? Yeah, they're targeted to small business owners and all the books, the ideas and the concepts and everything, they're all generated actually from working with my clients. So I would start seeing things such as Talking to many business owners, it's like we we get into the financial statements and they're like, oh, I don't look at it. I hate numbers. I hate accounting. And I'm like, you really have to know your numbers to really manage your business. So that's the way you're measuring everything. And they really like just don't know how to read a profit loss statement. Most of the time when I say your P&L statement, they give me like, what the heck is that? It's like, this is critical being a business owner. And then I started seeing a trend. It was like, that wasn't just one business owner. It was tons. And it's like, you know what? There's Every time I talk with a business owner, I break it down very simple, not in an accounting terminology and not in this crazy, I'm going to teach you how to build a profit loss statement. It's no, how to just read three numbers from it to make better decisions in your business. And I kept doing that and I'm like, I should write a book about this because I'm saying the same dang thing over and over. And I've seen the growth of those business owners. Now they're looking at their profit loss statements because I just hit, and usually in QuickBooks, run statement. But now they're making smarter decisions in their business just on the knowledge they have. Do they know how to create one? No, they don't need to be a CPA or an MBA to do it. Guess what? They just need to understand their numbers. And so I created a whole book on basically just looking at three different numbers and look at three others as another indicator and stop making it so hard. Stop the craziness. Right. Right. Yeah, you, I thought that was just from the artsy side, because we chat a little bit about you know, people who um, want to publish their book and they think they're going to make money and they don't want to think about all the business part. Yeah. Everything's a business. It's a business. But I'm a little shocked that even business owners don't want to look at their numbers too. Oh, it's so common. And it's because they don't understand accounting. That's why they hate it. Yeah. And I think that resistance stifles their clarity. Oh. And yeah. So, but you, so you kind of pre- provided like the, um, I don't know, like a blueprint. So it's already established and you, they just have to plug in the numbers and understand what's triggering those numbers. Yeah, yeah. it's just simple. It's, I'm breaking it down and getting it out of CPA speak. Right. And putting it in their language and it's something simple. It's like, well, here's this. Here's what it causes this versus 
you know, let's get into all the, oh, it's their cost of goods. And then amortized over this. <laughs> what the? <laughs> They're going to be, don't do that to them. And that's why CPAs okay. talk. I know. Nobody understands amortiz- amortization. Nowhere. It's no like, how, how, nowhere. Hey, <laughs> let's look at your, you know, business owners are so worried about their revenue number, the top line where I keep showing them. It's like, you're looking at the wrong number. It's good to look at that. Yes. But look at your profit. That's what's taken now home at the end of the day. Right. How many ducats you have in the bank? Exactly. And I'm surprised, um, you know, I've, I've owned small business myself and I did notice that a lot of business owners don't understand profit. I, I oh, couldn't yeah. believe that. I'm like, how can you be? And that, that's what you kind of work for. That's your paycheck um, after all the expenses. And mm-hmm. they, they thought they were making X amount of money with the gross sales. And I'm like, well, you're, you're, you're you know, paying your lease, your taxes, your insurance, your employees. <laughs> uh, oh. You're not, you're losing money every month, (laughs) yes. (laughs) It's sad, but it's very common. You know, they only know what they know. So that's what they're basing it on. And a lot of times, I mean, I've even had to go, some companies, it's like, wait a minute, something's just not right about your financials. Let's bring in an auditor and, you know, let's really clean up the books. And once they clean it up and say, so you haven't made a penny in years. And they thought they were killing it. Right. And they always wonder why they had no money. Well, yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> you're spending more than you actually take in. Yeah, yeah it's called no money. So. And you're, the statements you ran because you didn't like accounting and put the right data in right. gave you the wrong result. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. But I'm sure, I don't know, are they kind of angry at you at first? Sometimes. Yeah, I thought so. Because you're like, oh, you just burst their bubble and you have to, you know, they have to put on their, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, business panties and, you know, yeah. big panties and suck it up and, you know, make sure they understand because that's part of, that's the vital part of their success. I, mean, I even went into a business owner and he had these, those business boxes, you know, we all have them, at the file cabinet boxes. <laughs> And there was like about 20 of them on the wall. And I'm like, your office is so perfect. And then you have all these boxes here. What the heck? And he goes, oh, those are all my financial statements. I just get it from my CPA and throw it in there. I don't know how to read them. So I'm not opening them. Oh, wow. I'm like, you've been in business how long? He goes, well, 15, box of 15 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like. And he, st- he was dying. He had no money. Oh, wow. And I just opened up the last one. I'm like, oh, man, uh, we need to have a chat. So wow. let's get with your CPA so we can get this honed in. The CPA refused. So I brought it, had him bring in another CPA. We spent a Saturday and a Sunday together just showing him the basics. Nothing crazy. Basics. The CPA did the counting stuff. That's their world. Within three months, all his decisions, the second he got a financial statement, he'd crack it open and look at just a couple numbers and make all his decisions based in measurements off of it. His business took off. Just little things like this. Wow. Now, do you have, um, so my next question I was thinking about maybe and going through this conversation, what are some of the struggles of writing your books, but also do you have trouble, um, you know, maybe convincing people to read them because they're so resistant. Yeah, I'll talk about the struggles. The struggle for me is time. (laughs) So I actually started putting, to get the last book done, time in my schedule. And it was always on a Sunday, so no phone calls, none of that. Could shut off everything and just hunker down for two hours a week and just pound it out. But what I would do is like wherever I left off after my two hours is up, wherever I left off, I put a little sticky note right where I left off on my computer or something to get me back in the state of flow. Because once you're in flow, it just things work. Right. So then when I came back to the next Sunday, I'd read the sticky note. Here was where my mind was 
last week because you got to get back into flow fast. Otherwise, it takes you close around 20, 30 minutes to get back in it because you got to go back and read what you wrote and get back into the idea. So the sticky notes kind of help me just read maybe two pages backwards, not 10 or 20. And that got me through the book a lot faster. And I, I felt that was the biggest thing because time was the biggest issue. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about any of that stuff when you're writing at your first draft. I don't. And then I'll go back once it's done. Well, done the first draft, really rough draft. I'll go back in and now I'll add things because I'm in a different state of flow. Add what I got to do. And then I actually pass it off to my editor. They're the ones I call them my grammar Nazi. Because to me, putting a comma somewhere, it's irrelevant. It's not my thing. It's their thing. So I'm trying to make it easier on me, just like business owners. Like if this is not a strength of yours, it's a strength for someone else. I know this is a weakness. Line. Great. I have people who it's a strength. Here you go. Take it. And then they red pen it and they get the gist of it real quick and they make changes. And you know what? I know they're going to see it from a totally different perspective than me. Guess what? That's great. I'm good with it. Getting someone to read it is a different story. So my very first book, which I've only sold this many copies, and I tried to talk them out of it. <laughs> well, that's a first, trying to talk them out of it. <laughs> and the reason was it's my very first book is a lead magnet for the business. That's what it was created for. It's all content. So it was actually created with the business mindset. It's a lead magnet. I'm not going to be a bestseller with this one. Don't care. That little dang book that I give away all day, every which way, is definitely done its mark. It has done what it was supposed to do. How I get people to read it is when they download it, it I put them in a drip campaign. And now I'm taking the book, which just showcases eight simple strategies to grow your business. And I just take it in little bite-sized chunks and feed it to them like once a week. Now it's digestible to them. And when it, since I've ever, since I've started doing that was about middle of last year, the engagement is so much higher. So people are now reading my whole book over the course of six months versus downloading it and probably nothing happens. Well, that's very clever. Very, very clever. So let me ask you this, your books, are they, are they good across business? So the principles they should work for anybody who has a business and even say authors who are launching their book or creating a business from their book. So all your books would work for across business genre, I should say. I mean, yeah, across all industries and sizes. So obviously it doesn't address corporate America or corporate anywhere because that's a totally different thing. But this is like, Hey, I'm thinking about, I'm just starting up. What do I do? My latest book is 15 Steps to Business Acceleration. Well, it kind of says it all right there. <laughs> yeah. And it's simple things. It's not, I don't want someone going out and spending a lot of money on marketing and advertising because everyone, the people I talk to, I mean, they, they're trying to bootstrap guerrilla marketing. Right. So it's, you can utilize this for your book, for your program, your courses, whatever your product or service. Nice. Now, since you have so many, so the beginning business owner, or maybe the beginning book launcher who wants to create, is there any particular book they should start with out of your six? <laughs> uh, I always, well, my very first one is the 45 minute business breakthrough. So it shows eight simple strategies. So you get leads. So it's a lot of like, how are you going to bring the business in? But we also have on the marketing side of it and digital, digital strategies. So for like books, the digital strategy book, simple, you know, I think it's 10, uh, 10 simple digital strategies to put in because that blew me away too. business owners. Well, I got to do Facebook ads. It's like it's more than that. There's actually a strategy behind it. And that's why your Facebook ads don't work. There's a strategy that you need to know. And when you're launching a book. It should be also about press releases. It's about media. It has to be 
have a strategy, a marketing plan around it. You can't just launch a book, do one post on Facebook and pray. Yeah, yes, I, I heard that hope is not a good business strategy. And uh, sometimes you can write it, but they don't come. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like my yeah. last book, it gets officially launched, I think, by the end of the month. Well, why? It's because I've been building the PR behind it for the last month. So before it gets launched, plus and plus where I got it printed it took a long time because supply chain, so I, it delayed the hard copies, the printed versions. Wow. So it worked, but there's a strategy behind it to build the momentum up and take pre-orders for it. Then you launch. So have a plan. Definitely. I think that's great advice. So that leads me to, I mean, you provide a lot of great insight and tips um, for our listeners today, but see if we can maybe leave them with maybe three steps that you can suggest, the key steps that they really need to, you know, that has to be the priority in, in any business plan. Oh, first one is it took me a long time. It took me by my third business to really hit this to come in and that's get help. You cannot do everything yourself. You might be thinking you're Superman or Superwoman. It, sorry to say, you only know what you know. That's why I say when I book's done, I give it to someone so their strength is editing, layout, the cover, not my strength. If you're trying to do all that by yourself, guess what you're going to have? A schlocky product. You really are. Because in your mind, you think, I know how to write. Yeah, we all know how to write. Someone knows how to fix it. <laughs> Get help. Same thing in your business. You're not strong on accounting in your numbers. Find someone who will. Guess what? There's people out there who love the, playing with those numbers. If you're not that, give it, hire them. And there's ways to do it. The second thing is seek out experts. So before I launched, well, we were just talking about this, I launched a podcast. Before I did that, I actually went on other people's podcasts for a year and I asked them, can I have five minutes of your time afterwards? I'm interviewing them for two reasons. One, I'm getting insight on the pros and the cons of launching a podcast, what to expect, like all the pitfalls, the hurdles, all those kind of things. And another thing is like learning from their experience. So they've already been there, done it. I haven't charted this territory yet. I'd be, I always said, I'm a fool if I don't listen. To them. So I say, listen to people who have been there, done it before. And then the third is build a support team around you. So it doesn't matter what it is in your business. I mean, I use a lot of VAs and strategic partners. Why? It's because, well, I know what I'm good at. I know what they're good at. And I hire people who are great at things that I'm not good at <laughs> or things I hate to do. There are certain things I really hate to do and someone loves to do it. And I'm like, Gary, I got to get it <laughs> off my plate because now I can focus on my business and on my clients because that's where I love. That's my sweet spot. But if I want to, if I don't want to do a social media post, throughout the day. Guess what? I got someone who loves doing that. They're online all day. Me, I'm online three minutes a day. And that's all I want to be on. Well, those are awesome tips. Uh, we, we will learn from your heirs, wise <laughs> one. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not, you know, I've had seven businesses and ran others. They're not all unicorns and rainbows and sprinkles. <laughs> There is some ugliness well, in there, but I've learned from all. all. <laughs> yes. Well, we appreciate your errors so you can bring that uh, insight yeah. to us. <laughs> That's what helped with the books. It's like, don't do this. I are, That's I'm right. Proof. They're really I'm, not how-to books. They're be sure you don't do it this way books, right? <laughs> here's a shortcut. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you know, here's well, why the shortcut. <laughs> yes. I'm a big advocate of shortening the, cur the learning curve. Oh, yeah. So, and usually 
going through other people's experiences, good, bad, and indifferent. Um, and that's why I decided to launch a podcast because I myself needed more expertise out there to have different perspectives, have different horror stories <laughs> to learn from. I mean, in essence, right? That's true. Um, but it's really about helping people shorten their learning curve and try to avoid um, some of those errors and, and horror stories that, because in essence, what that does is put you off the path makes it harder and longer for you to get back on it and get what you want to accomplish. And also it does something to you mentally, makes you feel like a failure. So that's my big purpose of the bot. The podcast is sharing uh, other experts across the fields, uh, you know, who've written books. And that seems to be for the nonfiction is the mm -hmm. don't do it this way. I found out you can get to your point of destination is shorter, better, and it's going to make you happier and profitable. Absolutely. So and since we're talking about books, it's like I always read books about business leaders, historical figures. Right. Guess what? Those books are actually chock full of lessons for you in your business, no matter what you do they're giving you some tips to like, here's some pitfalls to avoid. Learn from these people. They're famous for a reason. Right. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. Right. And, and they didn't let their obstacles or failures stop them too. Right. And that's, I think the big uh, lesson in it all, you keep going, you just get better and better. Yeah. I'm a big advocate of building the better mousetrap to <laughs> be more efficient. Of course, I feel I wouldn't kill any little mouses, but <laughs> that's my my uh, visual of it, because you want to design something that's going to be effective on the first try. In essence, yes. if and you, you know can't, what? some things work for first time, second time, and sometimes if well, you're tweaking it as you're going exactly that time, but you're going to hit gold and it's the right. perseverance and sticking to your goals and your mission and knowing you're going to have a rocky road as a business owner, right? Writing your book, you're going to have rocky roads too. You're going to have a block. Well, I'm not saying it right. Just say something to get the, right. get unblocked. Exactly. And the, what I define as the first time success is actually getting it done because you can't, you can only so much visualize what, what this can do. And you have to actually see it in the working motion. Mm -hmm. You know, the spring didn't work. You know, the cheese got away and it didn't spring all the way. So these are things that, you just have to, as I steal it from Nike, just do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't make this a deathbed regret. Right, right. I actually think I got the best advice on life, and it, it was from a fiction author. He's actually a pretty well-known author. Another reason why people are successful in hard um, industries is they, they think differently. And one of the things that he said is, what are you, why are you so protective of your life? You're going to miss out. You know, if you, if, even if you follow your dreams and fail, you at least, like you said, don't have a death, right. deathbed um, regret. That's it. <laughs> so, Just get it done. Get it done. And, and you know what you're thinking? Well, now it's done. What? Well, you had something to say. You said it, now let other people know about it. Right. And here's too about, you know, not worrying about getting things right because I, I, and not, not not also too not worrying about validation because I also do pottery and I launched a series of ceramics that was kind of poo-pooed by galleries. Mm. It was called Naked Clay because the the mindset 
of most gallery owners for at least for ceramics is you had to put some flashy, colorful glaze. It was the color me mine era. Well, I would schlep my slides and samples to galleries and was poo pooed a lot. I had one gallery owner who uh, gave me a chance, nothing sold. And she told me that, you know, you got to, I, you know, I given you a chance. It's not working. Well, on the day that I was to pick up my pieces out of it, all my pieces sold, <laughs> but what <laughs> on the day I picked it up. So sometimes you just have to write, wait for the right people to appreciate mm -hmm. what you have to offer, even if nobody else does. That's it. So, Stick mm -hmm. to your, your mission. Yes. So, well, any other final thoughts that you can uh, share with us? I'm with you. Just get her done. Get her done. <laughs> Just do it. Just, Just do, do, it. do it. Because, you know, <laughs> once it's done, you're going to, you're like, well, I'm going to fix it. Fix this and that. No, 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 no. No rewrite. You're done. Yeah. Now move to the next step. Right. Get it in print on electronic digitally and start telling everyone about it and get it out. Yes. Yes. Otherwise it it'll never there. get done if you want to keep tweaking it. That's right. Yes. That that's even, even for an artist who doesn't know how to stop messing with the, the clay yeah. on the wheel too. <laughs> You're going to ruin, yes. you actually ruin your work by playing with it more. You, yes. Because well, not only that, you overthink it and you That's ruin it. the energy on it, right? You mess up the flow. That's why I just here it is to my editor. Fix it. Go. Yes. Fit. yes. You fix. <laughs> Could I add another chapter in? Yeah, yeah. But no, we had I hit the goal of the objectives of the book. And it was all on mark. I'm like, okay, we're done. No more. Don't play with it anymore. Right. It's gone. Plus right. a timeline helps. So I gave a timeline to my editor and myself. <laughs> That's good advice. So just do it, send it off to somebody else to fix it, and then just keep on creating. Yeah, go to your next. Go to your next book, your next project, and be happy. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yes. I mean. Be fulfilled. I don't know if we'll all be happy, but at least feel be fulfilled, right? Exactly. <laughs> Because you're going to drive yourself mad. You keep playing with it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I know. This is this is where it, it gets stuck in the mind stuff. Well, Steve, I want to thank you for sharing your fantastic insights today. And before we close out the podcast, tell our listeners where we can find out more about you. Great. The, the easiest place, and well, it's going to stalk me to death, but it's on bizcoachsteve.com. So it's B-I-Z coachsteve.com. It's about me. Books are on there. I even have recommended reading for business owners on there as well. And then play a little short little videos to help business owners in all industries to help them grow their business. And it's all just content creation as well as all the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook. That's pretty much all I hang out on. Awesome. Well, again, I want to thank you for being here today and sharing those fantastic insights. And I want to thank our listeners too for tuning into the Leap Into Your Story podcast where you discover your inner story, work through the process and meet others who've done it so you can be guided into your journey to write your story. So remember to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. We're looking forward to seeing you next time here on the Leap Into Your Story podcast. Thank you for tuning into the Leap Into Your Story podcast, where you discover your inner story, break down the process, and meet others who've done it so you can leap into your own story. Remember to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, 
While you're there, subscribe and like to us via your favorite social media network. We're looking forward to seeing you next time on the Leap Into Your Story podcast.